Good Tuesday morning. I'm Father Steve from St. Bridges Hermitage. And this moment's with the Master. Today is the second day of May, 2023. And our readings today come from the book of Acts, chapter 11, verses 19 through 26, Psalms 87, verses 1 through 7, and also the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 30. Well, folks, I hope that you're having a wonderful day. I hope this is a blessed week for you. And as always, I'm going to start off with that gentle encouragement to keep up on your scripture reading and your prayer life. Folks, I'm hoping you, this year, will be the best version of yourself. You know, we've had a great Easter tide. you know, things, I just want you guys to be the best versions of yourself. It's important. It's important to God. It's important to me. Uh, enough of that. It's been a, so sorry, folks, it's early morning for, for me, earlier than most. Uh, let's see how this reflection uh, plays plays itself out it's reflections on on faith something I was thinking about early this morning I was thinking about it everybody has faith even non-believers have faith think about all those folks that invest in the stock market you know they're putting their faith in their in their whoever's handling their portfolio uh, they're putting faith in their equities and securities and mutuals and what have you. And some people are putting their faith in their educators. They're putting faith in religious leaders. Let's stop off here for a second. That's a really bad direction to go. Fathers, reverends, bishops, uh, what have you. We're fallible men, fallible women, fallible people. If you're keeping your eye on us, you're taking your eye off God. I'm just saying. Well, enough of that. But it comes down to every moment of our lives, we're expressing some kind of faith into something or someone. We jump on the freeway. We're expecting all those folks, we have faith in them, that they can drive their cars well and they're not going to run us off the road. They're not going to crash into us. But what is faith? What is the definition of faith? One definition I came up with an online dictionary, it states complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Our scriptural definition that I'm going to use today comes from Hebrews 11.1. 1. I'm going to read this in the Amplified. Now faith is the assurance, title deed, confirmation of things hoped for, divinely granted, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Everybody has faith, everybody. Even the science folks, they have faith. They have their faith in their findings and hopefully their findings and their facts won't, won't change with the next with the next scientist, with the next finding of, that they have. Today, though, today, if I don't get anything else to you, I want to get this to you. Understand that faith is only as good as the object you have faith in. For us as followers of Christ, that object is God. Yeah, you know, Christians are always smacked for, for having blind faith. You know, and we read in the scriptures, for we walk by faith and not by sight. And this verse implies that we're trusting in something that we can't otherwise see or perceive. That's true. In one sense, I've never seen God. I've never heard an audible voice. Yeah, it would be nice to, to see a burning bush and to have God tell me, you know, with absolute clarity what he wants out of me and, and the direction he wants me to go. You know, I, I doubt that's going to happen. But for those people who, who tell us that, let's take an atheist, for example, they exercise a form of, 
blind faith themselves, you know, they say, well, there's no afterlife. And they say that, but not one of them has firsthand knowledge of that the statement is true. It's a conclusion based on their deductions. They get certain information, they exclude other information, and they come up with their own ideas. That's blind faith. We see that in both definitions, whether it's our, our definition or an atheist definition, there's an amount of confidence and trust in, in, in each one of them. The difference is, is, is what we as followers of Christ are putting our faith in. What's the object of our faith? I, I have to believe we have a, a fairly uh, uh, strong edge on, on, on non-believers. Our faith is the creator of the universe. I don't think you can get better than that. Of course, there's going to be devil, different, levels, different levels of faith because, you know, all things aren't equal and there's a varying degree of trust. A trust in, again, our religious leaders, educators, as opposed to our Father. Again, the object of our faith determines the outcome of our faith. I'm going to make it practical, you know me, practical. Chairs. You know, I've, some of you have heard this one before. Chairs. You know, we just sit in a chair. We go home, we sit in a chair. We go to a restaurant, we sit in a chair. School, work, what have you, we sit in a chair. You know, we don't question the chair. We don't test the chair. We just plop ourselves down. And because the chair has proven reliable in the fat past, we consider it reliable and worthy of our trust. This this is a practical definition or uh, example of, of our object being where our faith is in. Uh, again, our, our faith is in Jesus Christ and his claims about himself. Our, our faith is in the scriptures. For Christians, followers of Christ, we believe that God has revealed himself uh, external of, of scriptures. He's He shows us himself and his work in his creation. We read that in Romans 1.20. So we have scripture and we have physical evidence of his creation. You know, something that I was thinking about, and that, as I was jotting down some notes for this video, I came across and people having faith in faith, and like as some, as as faith was some kind of pool of of I don't know water that they can they can just grab more faith as they need it, and they believe that's true just because I don't know, they believe it's true that. It doesn't seem to have a logical end. It appears that their faith is in themselves, which is probably the worst possible thing you can put your faith in. Faith is not something we conjure up in our own of our own. It's not something we're born with. It's it's not a result of, of educational or spiritual pursuits. One of the biggest misconceptions we as followers of Christ have is that we can create our own faith somehow. And we can't. You know, if we look at Scripture, it makes it clear that faith is a gift from God. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 reads, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. Romans 10, 16 through 17. For Isaiah said, the Lord who has believed what he has heard from us. So faith comes from hearing and hearing from the, through the word of Christ. And lastly, Hebrews 11.6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that his, he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So in trusting in God, trusting in our Lord Jesus, and that 
all that the scriptures have to say about them. The creator of the universe, his son who suffered, died and rose and ascended into heaven. These are what we put our faith into. Uh, but our faith, I think, is valid. We read in 2 Peter 1, 16 through 21, the apostle gives us two elements of of uh, foundation for our for our faith, one he's using himself as an apostolic witness to to Jesus Christ in verses sixteen through eighteen, and in in the second half in verses nineteen through twenty one, he's using prophetic revelation of the scriptures. You know, Peter boldly counters the, the the skeptics in verse. Uh, 16 of this passage and it reads for we did not follow cleverly devised tales when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ but we are eyewitnesses of his majesty and we have to believe the witness because Peter's laying down a foundation that we can understand before and he goes off in chapter 2 and deals with the false teachers that obviously were plaguing the church and and, and denying the, the apostolic teaching of Christ. Folks, faith came to us when we first heard the words of Christ, when we initially became saved, when we accepted our Lord and Savior. Our faith continues as we move on in our on our journey. As, as followers of Christ, we're strengthened by the Word of God and every time we read it through our pr prayer life. Because as all believers, we have faith in Romans 10, 17, we read, so faith comes out of hearing and hearing through the Word of Christ. And yeah, our faith sadly falters at, at times. That, that doesn't make us weak Christians. That doesn't make us bad Christians. That makes us human. Sometimes we take our eyes off the object of our faith. And it just makes us human, folks. Sometimes it happens. But because faith is a gift of God, we, we, we have to accept that God allows certain times of trials and testings and to, in order to build and prove our faith is real. It sharpens and our strengthens us. Yeah, sometimes it's painful, and, and nobody likes to go through that. But it's it's how we build ourselves up as as mature Christians. You know, growing in faith is going to require time, effort, some hard times. It's going to be tough. But God calls us to call, be warriors. God wants us and expects us to ultimately grow and become mature Christians, mature followers. And folks, I want you all to be strong in the faith and to have faith in our, in our, in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Father. Folks, this is just a little short blip on the subject of faith. Yeah, there are books and books and, and articles and videos, you know, hours long about faith. You know, I encourage you all to to either watch them or read them. Build yourself up. Well, those are my early morning reflections. I hope <laughs> I hope you you enjoyed them. I hope it came across okay today, guys. Been a late night. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord hold you in the palm of his hand. Until we meet again.